Hello, 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 and welcome back to Disco Elysium, my friends. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll be right back. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. We're gonna be playing this game. Okay, what do we got to do? It's early in the day. We gotta get ourselves organized with the Mazovian economics that are out there because we wanna be a communist and we only have 0.001% no, 0.0001% of communism. Bill. Now, though. Hmm, how are we gonna get in there? Did I talk to the guy? I didn't because I was trying to find that skeeve thing. There it is. Hey, 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 give that to him and then I'll talk because, you know, I don't want to be dick to guard. Rough to grouse. Hello, mister. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Are you Lillian's daughter? Yes, I am. Little Lily. You know my mom? Yes, we met her earlier. That's nice. My mom is great. She's never angry or anything. <laughs> What's that thing you're holding? It's Lammy. He's my friend. Sort of. Like... Lambie is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing, and the fur is tattered in several parts. Oh, okay. Well, pleased to meet you, Lammie. Lammie usually doesn't like strangers, but you're also fuzzy, like Lammie. That's... Bye! Bye. <laughs> it's very rude. Taking this rough grouse. We're going to talk to God. Wait, no, something about this bunch doesn't smell right. What do you mean, aren't there ever its guys? They are, but they don't seem too keen to talk with you, do they? No, they don't. Glenn seems to be contemplating grievous bodily harm while he massages his raw knuckles. In the far back, Eugene is doing his best to ignore you. <laughs> and from his perch at the end of the table, Titus Hardy hits. Besides, you're pretty sure they consider themselves social democrats. <laughs> Alright, guess I'll look elsewhere then. In the back. Can I help you? Hey, uh, Gart. I found a new bird for the whirling. What is this thing? It's no biggie. I just thought it would look nice on the wall. On that kind of cup. What? The interior decorating kind? You know, I'm sorry. This is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. Well, I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. So, I don't know. Thank you. I'm gonna go with thank you. People just don't know how to accept gifts. Especially taxidermy. He likes it. He likes the bird. It solves his broken bird problem. I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. Well, well. Bringing in that new bird sure made a difference in his attitude. Gart, I saw another thing at the whirling. Another thing? Great. I love those. 
there's a mysterious blue steel door in the back of the kitchen. Oh yes, that door, sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. Do you know what's behind it? Do you have... No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just the frick warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. I think you'd like to know what's back there. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So, I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. <sighs> So the phone line is dead? Yes, and the phone company is taking its sweet time sending someone to fix it. Losers. Is it true that there was foul play? Who told you that? I would never disclose my sources. That would be dishonorable. Fine, yeah. It looked like someone had messed with the wiring. It was shortly after the hanging, but I don't know if it's at all related. Plenty of assholes around here who aren't murderers. If you do find out who cut the line, though, let me know so I can forward them the repair bill. There's something else I want to talk to you about. Yes. Goodbye. <laughs> That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Goodbye. All right. A thin man is as you step in. Okay, it's definitely not his name. Whatever you do, please don't call him Garancy Quebec. Please, it's not funny. Hello, sir. Got time for a few questions? The man puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. Do you know what's behind that door? He looks up at you, then looks away quickly, shrugging and muttering something to himself. Shrugging is an international sign for, no, I don't know what's behind that door. You got some impressive pots there. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. I don't think I need any else. Stay masculine. Alright. All right, we got to find that key. All and chirps of locusts fill the musky air. The earthen floor of the shack has been shaped into mounds of mud dotted with little holes for windows. Well, detective, it appears you are on the way to solving the case. The missing locust case, which is a subcase of the imaginary insect case. So at least that's going well. Huh? Yeah, we need to tell Morel about this immediately. Of course, I'll leave that to you.
Man, I don't know. I guess I'll go tell him about this thing. I don't know what else to do though. Hello. Lena and I were just discussing the design of the new trap. I found the locusts in a nearby shack. Some kids built a city of them. What the devil? Why would kids be making a city of bugs? Oh my dear Morel, you've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. I'll talk to the kids, ask them to stop. It's probably the two kids in the yard near the shack. Oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please, let us know if the kids can stop hampering us. I have a feeling we're getting so close. Well, I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play suzerainty, but no more field trips for me. After this is your last chance to talk to Gary. Really, Gary? We're getting somewhere here. I I'd love to play suzerainty, but... Lena, I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here. Leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it. Even if it's bugs. Morel, it's been fun. Really. But I need a bath and I have deliveries to handle. When this tea is done, I gotta run. No, no. No need to apologize, Geary. You'd be more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's rain tea today, though. We're gonna follow this through. He keeps the language unemotional, but it's in there. Disappointment. I'll get going. Alright, let's see what Gary has left to talk about, Mr. Always a pleasure boy. to see an, I mean, officer. Right. Da da da. Da da da. Da da. Oh. Excuse me, boys. Let me uh, just change my clothes here so I'm ready for this. Do I need logic? Probably not. Hell, I'll do this. It'll give me reaction speed just for this. What you doing near our uh, car here? That's one brutal motor carriage. If I were a real skull now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it, neon style. A snazzy shit ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could, like, hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cops' heads. Scary tribal shit. Yeah, tribal shit. A cock courage like this would have proper skull value. Ahem. <clears throat> While I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage, I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, if we were certified skulls right now... Who are I'll you? tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches. Or skulls. Well, uh... Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and... On the contrary. The part of this presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is... We're not part of the skulls. Yet. Who are the skulls? You don't know? 
What kind of cop are you? I'm so glad you asked. The question was rhetorical. The Skulls are the most vicious gang of the Besmertnay. The nastiest bunch of psychos ever. Jacking carriages and getting into high-speed chases. Possessing an infinite amount of fuck-all swagger, infamous for their non-verbal modus operandi. They usually occupy the burnt-out quarter in Genrock. Or you can find them loitering around the brightly painted bottom-lighted vehicles. Ah, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to become a skull. Bottom lights are wretched aggressive. Do you know anything about the murder that took place here? Murder? A man was hanged in the backyard of the world in rags. Yeah, sure. We'll gladly tell you everything we know about it. <clears throat> it was a man. Also, he was hanged. Anything else? He was hanged from a tree. Yeah, I mean, duh. This pan. Hey, stop right there. How does one know anything? I'm not going to entertain you with any of this any longer. Sure, sure. Understandable. Fucking I appreciate your effort, though. Do you guys know Cindy the Skull? Oh yeah, Cindy's a right proper skull. Yeah, a true artist of the future. Just like Arno Van Eyck. Uh, by the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards. Odd, there isn't a hint of hate in them. It's like they're piss and fuck the world out of some kind of moral obligation. The lieutenant on your left is unusually lenient toward them. I see you kids are into a nautic dance music. Oh man, yeah. We're not fucking kids, man. Be wary of the abyss. Why? It's a threat. An impotent threat of violence. A threat? Good. I like those. But I don't. In fact, I dislike them so much I'm willing to drag you boys back to the station just to calm myself down. Hey, uh, there's no need for that. We're just talking here. Joking, too. Stay light, man. Uh, Kim don't like that. Kim don't play those games. He don't play those games, yeah. man. Didn't you cops, like, have some questions about skulls or some shit? Oh, now you're scared? Why aren't there more schools in Marnais? The Union does their share of policing in Martinez, at least where gangs are concerned. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. Apart from the Unions themselves, of course. Don't you worry about that. Are they We're crime? gonna make up for the deficit. Yeah, we are. Enough of this scullery, then. Mm -hmm. What's with the jackets? What about them? Why does your jacket have on it? Well, first off, it's a statement and not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person, even though the statement has character. And I do like piss. The word piss epitomizes the struggle taking place in the world. Things being defined as they seem, not as they are. And I guess it's also about communal spirit, the future, and truly appreciating our differences. Also, you've got to admit, it catches the eye. And since the Grand Piper is slowly but steadily moving towards basing the economy on it, attention, it is imperative that the medium itself convey the message. This guy's ridiculous. <laughs> Makes sense. What I mean by this is, we are all piss f and that the world is inherently meaningless why do you have the world on your jacket like i said before many men keep searching for the one for so-called true love which is actually just obsession masquerading as kinship 
The thrill of the chase. The hollowness that fills your chest cavity after catching it. To catch a fish, you'll need to hurl the law many times, and even then it isn't certain that you'll get anything. If you blow up the lake, though... Blow it up! You get more fish in a shorter time. And, for time is of the essence and fleeting ever so quickly, one must think of a way to fuck the whole world and not get caught up in fucking someone. Because when one fucks everything, he fucks nothing. And that, to me, feels glorious. Sticking your dick into the void. Is it a coincidence that here we have two badass jackets and two badass cops? What do you think about their jackets? Leather jackets adorned with immature writing? The ideology they convey helps the boys justify poor choices in life and fashion. I'm not a fan. <coughs> Why are you always so patronizing when cool possibilities cross our path? What are you implying? Which one would you wear? I'm not sure I understand you, detective. Are you more of a... or a fuck the world kind of guy? Neither. Come on, Kim. It's a mental exercise. Fine, if only to end this discussion. Theoretically, if I were a juvenile delinquent, if I were to already be down that path, I think peace is the stronger of the two statements. That works. I feel like I'm feel more like a fuck the world kind of Seems guy. Seems about right, especially considering your heroic exit attempts. So are we done here? Or... You don't need us around for your secret whisper party, do you? <laughs> well, talking with you has definitely been something. Okay. Changing back to this. Keep the interfacing. I'm gonna put this song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Everything in order, detective? I'm working on developing my political consciousness. You're developing your... You know what? I'll just leave you to it. Carry on, detective. The lieutenant lacks your highly developed political olfactory cortex. The smell is undeniable. And it's coming from that balcony up there. You mean Cindy? Certainement. A precocious communist youth. A symbol of a kinder, more hopeful future. Now's your chance to establish contact with your revolutionary brothers and sisters. A chance to establish contact with the future. What a... Shop in Lin Empire. Oh, I suppose I should go talk to Sind. Sind, right? With the asking of me. Uh, I guess we'll go up to see Sind, but then we're gonna have to end the episode because we're hitting 30 minutes, baby. And here we are, Cindy. How you doing? How you doing? Um. Well, you know, thanks for liking, subscribing. I'll catch you all next time. Bye bye. Ah. <laughs>